Hey everyone, it's Blue Bear here, and today I'm going to squeeze a custom deck build in between the videos of decks that were ordered and not paid for. For a while, this deck actually was sitting unpaid for, but much to my delight, it did get purchased. Since it was going to be made for this week as part of the slew of unpaid and then revamped decks anyway, I figured why not just squeeze it in between. So what was ordered was an Angel Tribal deck with Lyra Dawnbreaker at the helm, with a small sub-theme of Life Gain. Lyra is a 2 white and 3 generic mana 5-5 legendary angel with flying, first strike, and lifelink, but her last ability of giving all other angels you control plus 1 plus 1 and lifelink is what really makes both themes viable. This is a full on angel tribal build, and some angels have lifelink built in already, but Lyra ensures that they all will have it. As far as the budget goes for this build, I was given a choice of either $40 or $150. Since I'm all about the budget builds, and I didn't have a couple of the really expensive angels to justify the $150 price tag, I decided to build this on a $40 budget. Now that that's out of the way, let me show you the deck and you can see just how I went about building this heavenly deck. So a mono white land base on a budget. Let's see how I was able to do that. We start off with Path of Ancestry because we are a tribal deck, so the scry ability should come into play often for this. Idyllic Grange, because it can come into play untapped and puts a counter on something, a plus one plus one counter, which is great, again, in Tribal. Nubinalia for that scry ability, because we're in a color that lacks card draw, like a good, decent card draw anyway. So scrying is the next best option, so you can make your draws at least count or be better. The Fair Basilica, again, card draw, we need it. This is one way to do it. If you don't need the land, you can at least sacrifice it later to draw a card. I have some cyclers in here, so we start off with Secluded Step, Drifting Meadow, and Desert of the True, because again, card draw. Then we have Ash Barrens, which doesn't give you a card, but it goes and gets a basic land, so it makes your draw later better, because you've got the land out of the deck and in your hand. <clears throat> Terminal Moraine, same thing as the Ash Barrens, you can get lands out of your deck and either into your hand, or this one at least puts it into play. And when that happens, you have the less chance to draw a land later, so your draws are automatically better. That goes the same with Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds. And then Encroaching Waste, because if you've seen any of my videos, you know I put at least one land destruction card in each deck. At least I try. Well, I'm running out. But I try to get as much land destruction in, or at least a land destruction in each deck, just because you never know what's out there. Somebody could have a combo that uses a land. At least you have some way to protect yourself. Seraph Sanctuary, because we are an Angel Tribal deck, and the life gain is a sub-theme for this deck. So why not... Have a land do it that does it for free, basically. And at least it adds a mana to your mana pool. And then the rest is a lot of planes. I don't remember the number. It's quite high. It's up there in how many lands there are, uh, how many planes there are. So as I always tell you, if you want to see the exact number, the, the link to the deck list will be in the description of the video. Moving on to the ramp section. This was a custom deck, so it gets a soul ring in it. So we start off with that, especially since angels have a high mana value or high mana cost. So Soul Ring is helpful for all the, the uh, high casting cost stuff. Mindstone, it's two to cast. It doesn't come into play tapped. So that's always a bonus. And then you can stack it later to draw a card. Marble Diamond. Sears Lantern, because again, card draw is kind of a weakness of white. I mean, I know they're trying lately, but it's still a weakness. At least in the budget we're in, it's a weakness. Because remember, it's only a $40 deck. That was the budget I was given. So Scrying is the next best option. So you can make your draws at least count when they, ha when they happen. Aresk of Relic. So if you have the City's Blessing... You can sacrifice it later to draw a card, and you get to gain life, which is the sub-theme of this deck, so that's always helpful. Hedron Archive, so another mana rock that lets you, lets you sack it to draw cards. Obviously, I've got to put as much of that in there as I can. Explorer Scope, I like Explorer Scope in a deck that's tribal, because you're going to be attacking. So you give the creature that is most likely going to survive this equipment, so that you can at least start looking at lands to get into play, and get them out of your deck. Starnheim Aspirant. It's not ramp, it's cost reduction. It makes your angel spells cost less, which is always useful. And then he, the person getting this deck actually had two cards that they already had from opening packs, I guess, of Double Masters, going by the amount, the, the, the four cards that they had. First one is Land Tax, is a banger in a monocolored deck. I actually think that Land Tax is huge in mono white, but also can be good in two color decks. After you get past two color decks, I don't like it as much, but with how many basics are in this deck, and you may be playing somebody playing green, which is, has a lot of land ramp, you should be able to draw the three lands out of your deck and make better draws later and the other card that they had was smothering tithe this is one of those cards that a lot of people put in their deck just because but it's not a bad card to have whenever somebody draws a card so if you're playing against something that is massive draw like a mono blue deck or even you know a wheels deck if they don't pay you get the treasure token so that it becomes ramp for you good card all around not always useful but it can be very useful in the right circumstances 
Now I'm going to go over the creature section, which is quite hefty. It's a very big section. I want you to bear in mind this was a $40 budget that I was given. So the angels aren't going to be the $40 angels that are pretty much bangers for any angel travel deck. This is going to be cards that fit the theme of the deck that fit well into the budget. So we start off with our Segovian Angel because it's a one to cast one one flyer with vigilance. It's a one to cast one one flyer with vigilance, meaning it has more abilities than the actual mana cost. Angelic Curator, 2 to cast 1-1 one, one with protection from artifacts and flying because it, most angels have flying. Angelic Page, 2 to cast 1-1 one, one flyer that can give an attacking or blocking creature plus 1 plus 1, which synergizes well with a couple of cards here. Angelic Cub being the first one. 2 to cast 1-1 one, one that when it becomes a target of a spell or ability for the first time each turn, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And as long as it has 3 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, it has flying. So, the synergy here is that you target it with the page. So when you target it, it gives it plus 1 plus 1, whether it's blocking or attacking. It gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter, because that's what its ability says to do. So it becomes a 3-3 three, three the first time you do something like that. Good synergy there. There's other things that synergize well with the Angelic Page, but that's the best one. Giada is the second commander of the deck. So when you buy a pre-con from Wizards of the Coast, they usually give you a second commander. Uh, Giada would be the second commander for this deck. You can switch it out from Lyra if you want. I would, in some cases, just because it's two mana for a 2-2 two, two Flying Vigilance that can ramp, which is, it gives, you could add, tap it to add a white and spend that mana to cast an Angel spell, which is kind of important when your Angels cost mana-wise so much. On top of that, I do plan on making my $40 pre-con style budget decks a Giada deck, so please uh, join me for that when it finally happens. Avian, oh, let me, one more thing. The other ability is that each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel you already control. Keep that in mind because I have some synergy with this that's really nice too. Uh, Avian Changeling. So there weren't a lot of low monetary value, good three to cast drop, or three drops for angels. So I had to go to Changelings. At least this one's a flyer. It's a 2-2 two -two flyer that is also an angel on top of every other creature type. Inspiring Overseer may be the best three drop uh common, at least, but one of the best 3-drop angels in the game. You're going to cast for a 2-1 flyer that lets you draw a card and gain a life. And that synergizes well with Emancipation Angel. This one, when it enters play, you have to return a permanent you control to your hand. So, if you have both of these, you can return the Overseer and then play it again and draw a card and gain a life again. So, it is a downside to it, which is to return something, but you can turn it into a positive. Lightkeeper of Amira, because this second theme of this deck is life gain. So this helps that along. And you can also return it with Emancipation Angel to do it again. Lulu, Loyal, I don't even know, Holophant, I guess that's how you call it, what do you call it? This is another one that you could choose as your commander. It's a 3-2 flyer that at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on each attached creature you control. You can choose a background with it if you have the want to make this your commander. It's the least viable one to make as your commander. There's a couple more in here that could be switched out, but this is probably one of the least. Stalwart Valkyrie, it's a 4-to-cast 3-2 flyer that has an alternate casting cost of 2 and exiling a creature card from your graveyard. Angelic Protector, it's a 2-2 flyer that gets a bigger butt whenever it's targeted. Voice of Grace, 2-2 flying protection from black, so you eliminate a lot of spot removal with this card, at least for this card. Sustainer of the Realms, 4-to-cast 2-3 flyer that gets a bigger butt. A regular cohort, this is where the synergy with Giada is nice. It's a shapeshifter, so it counts as an angel. It's a 4 cast 2-2 that when it enters play, you create a 2-2 colorless shapeshifter token with Changeling. So, the synergy with Giada is, with Giada out and you cast a cohort, the cohort gets one counter for having Giada out, and this is a triggered ability, so it triggers putting another creature into play, and when that comes into play, it will get a plus one plus one counter for the Giada and the irregular quote, cohort. So the token will end up being bigger than the actual original creature. Malik of the Dawn, so it's a 2-4 flying with regeneration. Regeneration is nice. If you don't know the rules for regeneration, let me know and I will go over all that with you. You can just put a comment in the comment section. Thraven Watcher, Fortacast 2-2 two, two, flying vigilance and gives all other creatures that are not tokens plus one plus one and vigilance. Very important. It's nice to have anthems on a budget. Seraph of the Dawn, just a flying life linker. Life linker. It's always nice when it's part of your sub theme. Voice of All, you can give it protection from any color you choose when it comes into play. Guardian Seraph, this one's cool because it's a 3-4 flyer for 4, so the stats are great and the ability of being flying for 4 is actually good. But the other ability of if a source an opponent controls would deal damage to you, prevent one of that damage, that stops uh, Impact Tremor shenanigans. Anytime something triggers to deal one damage to you, this prevents it, it and each trigger would be a different instance of damage, so it would prevent them all. It does not stop life loss, just damage though. 
Shattered Angel, whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain 3 life, so a lot of life gain, especially for playing a ramp deck or a landfall style deck. Sarah Angel, the OG, the original gangsta here, had to have it, it's iconic. Angelic Quartermaster, it enters with a plus 1, plus 1 counter. Uh, it enters, you can put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 other creatures, so it helps you make your other guys bigger. Herald of War, one of the more important angels in the deck, 5 to cast, 3-3 three, three flyer. When it attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, so it makes itself grow. And then angels and human spells, you cast, cost one less for each plus one, plus one counter on it. Not <laughs> equal to its power, so the other buffs don't do anything for it. It's the counters that matter here. Sunblade Angel, it's just a big, lot of keyword abilities, Angel. Subjugator Angel, when it enters, you can tap all creatures your opponents control. And that is part of a way to at least get one or maybe two people off the board by tapping all the creatures and attacking. Now, because most of your guys are flying, you may not have a problem with that, but you never know what you're facing out there. You could face a dragon deck, and that's kind of important. Shepherd of the Cosmos can return something from your graveyard back to play. That's two mana or less. So you can get Giada back, you can get some of your mana rocks back, you can get an Angelic Page back. There's a lot of things this can target. And you can foretell it, which means it can be cheaper over time. Angelic Skirmisher, at the beginning of each combat, it'll give, you can choose First Strike, Vigilance, or Lifelink, and the creatures you control gain that ability until end of turn. With Lyra out, you won't choose Lifelink because they do not stack. And if you have the Watcher out, you won't choose Vigilance because they don't stack, it doesn't matter. So most likely you'll be choosing First Strike, but if neither of those are out, you may choose the Lifelink. So, Valkyrie Harbinger, so 6 to cast 4, 5 flying Lifelinker, and then at the beginning of each end step, and this is each end step, if you gain four or more life, you create a 4-4 four, four angel with flying and vigilance. Basically, you create Sarah Angel tokens. They're not called Sarah Angel, but they, that's what they are. And the last angel in the deck is another one you can choose as your second commander if you choose to. is Safara Sky's Blade. Very high casting cost, which is why all the, the cost reduction is important. It's 7 to cast for a 7-7 seven, seven flying lifelinker, but has an alternate casting cost of paying 1 white and tapping 4 untapped creatures you control with flying rather than paying its cost. And it gives all other creatures you control with flying indestructible. So it's a very good card. High mana value, high casting cost, but I have tried to make it so that it can come out faster. I'm going to split up the utility into two different sections. We're going to have destruction stuff, so stuff that removes stuff from the board, and then pure utility after that. So we start off with the destruction stuff. There's a lot here. This section's pretty big because that's what white likes to do. Creature removal, I have things like reprisal. And these are all good enough to be used in Commander. Uh, Swift response... Valoria Stance, because it's not just a creature removal, but it can also be, not also, and or on this one. I'm sorry. Or, you get to choose one. It can be creature removal or creature saving on your side. You can make something indestructible. Puncturing Light. Fierce Retribution. I know that the casting cost is high. Six to destroy target creature. But these are, because it's an instant, it's mostly for when somebody's attacking you, you can remove something that's attacking you. And most of the stuff in here, that's what it does. Like, Immolating Glare does it. Radiance Judgment doesn't, it just destroys a creature with power 4 or greater, but you can cycle it away if you need to draw a card and don't need the removal. Sky Whaler's Shot helps you scry a little bit too. Lucky Offering destroys an artifact with mana value 3 or less and you gain 3 life, so that does two things. It can be a Soul Ring or a Arcane Signet or any kind of mana rock killer. It does destroy a lot of things that are artifacts that are, that are quite useful that are 3 mana. It also gives you the sub-theme that we have for this deck, which is to gain life. Fragmentize, destroy an artifact or enchantment with mana value 4 or less. The OG Disenchant. I got two cards in here that came from Alpha. I'm not going to apologize for that. Sanctify destroys an artifact or enchantment and you gain three life. Revoke Existence exiles an artifact or enchantment. Invoke the, the uh, Invoke the Divine destroys an artifact or enchantment and you gain four life. That four life is key because there's a second card coming up in the utility section that it matters if you gain four life. Tarashi's Grasp destroys an artifact or enchantment and you gain life equal to its mana value. And Return to Dust exiles an artifact or enchantment and if you cast it during your main phase or during your turn, I'm sorry, during your main phase, specifically, you may do it again. So that's the destruction side of it, and then we're going to go into pure utility. They owned two of these cards. They are very expensive. In fact, the two cards I'm about to show you, equal both of them, I think, alone, or at least close enough, are more than how much the deck was itself. But they own them, so it doesn't matter. The Ferris Protection is great protection and should be in any deck that has white. <laughs> it's anti-board wipe. Somebody goes to wipe the board, you just use the Ferris Protection, all your stuff is safe, and you are too. Ghostly Prison helps helps prevent other people from attacking you. It makes attacking you cost two more, two generic mana for each one attacking. Again, they had that. Scroll of Avacyn. I put it in here for flavor, but it actually fits the theme of the deck well. So you can 
pay one and sack it to draw a card, which is useful in a deck that has is light on card draw. And then if you control an angel, you gain five life, which fits the theme of the deck. Introduction to Prophecy card draw. So you scry to draw a card. Yes, when you use blue as a color for your deck, you get that for one. However, we're not, so it costs three. Secret Rendezvous. You and target opponent each draw three cards. It's very political. You can choose somebody that you're trying to make friends with for the game. So you each get to draw three. Well of Lost Dreams. I have been a... A recent epiphany I've had, actually, is repeatable card draw is way more important unless the deck needs things like instants and sorceries to do cantrips. So if you're doing Spell Slinger, that's fine. But repeatable card draw, especially in colors that don't have the ability, things like Well of Lost Dreams help that on a budget. So whenever you gain life, and that's the sub-theme of this deck is life gain, you may pay X where X is less than or equal to the number of life you gained, and if you do draw X cards. So if you use Lyra, hit somebody for 5, it has life link, and you, you can pay up to 5, and for each mana you pay, you can draw that many cards. Repeatable card draw, and this is very key in a deck with life link, how many cards you can draw here could be pretty pretty high actually to the point where you may even need to throw in stuff like uh what is it the uh reliquary tower or something that helps make it so you have no maximum hand size answered prayers so it's an angel tribal deck and a life gain deck this one does both whenever a creature enters about a foot under your control you gain a life which is helpful and then if answered prayers isn't a creature it becomes a 3-3 angel with flying and then obviously other abilities that are added from other creatures you have it could gain lifelink and vigilance and all that good stuff plus one plus one so just realize it doesn't get counters from Giada when it when it becomes an angel because it's already in play and not an angel when it comes into play. And the last card of the deck, which is the payoff for all that life gain. I have a creature that does it too. I showed you that earlier. It's a Fortecast Enchantment in Angelic Accord. At the beginning of each end step, and that's each, not just yours, if you gain four or more life this turn, you create a 4-4 four, four, uh, angel creature token with flying. Not Vigilance though, so it's not a Sarah Angel. And there you have it, folks. Lyra Dawnbringer on a $40 budget. At least for my part, it was $40. If you throw in the four cards that they already had, the price jumps to $130. While those four cards aren't necessarily needed to run the deck, they will help a lot. Since Angel Tribal is such a popular theme, I'll be putting together a Giada Angel Tribal $40 budget build as one of my pre-con offerings soon. That way, you'll be able to see that it's able to be done without all those pricey cards and still be fun. As far as next week goes, I will be showing you the last of the custom ordered decks that weren't paid for. It's actually one I originally had built for my $40 pre-con offerings that I upgraded a tiny bit to fit the customer's wants, and then when they didn't pay, I had to revert it back to how I had it in the first place. It's kind of annoying that I had to do it, but it is what it is. Small hint, it's one of the most popular tribes in the game, so you won't want to miss it. That's all I've got for you this week. Thanks for watching, and... If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or concerns, or you just want to talk or chat about any of the videos I put out, you can do so using any of the methods I have displayed here. Additionally, if you would like to support the channel, you can do so in three ways. Donations are accepted and greatly appreciated. I have three methods with which you can do so displayed on the screen, and keep in mind that no amount is too small. If donations aren't your thing, and you would like to get something for your money, that's great too. I sell a lot of the decks I present on the channel, as well as mystery packs. So, if you're interested in any of these, you can contact me using the information I have up on your screen right now. Directly contacting me is usually the best and cheapest way to do so, but you can always look at what I currently have available on the Facebook Marketplace. And lastly, if you want to show your love and support for the channel, but like myself, are a little strapped for cash, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, watch some videos and give them a like, and possibly share them out on your social medias you use to help spread my content to more people. No matter what way you choose is greatly appreciated and will help support the channel, and I thank you for it. Sadly, that is all the time I have for this video. Thank you for watching, and please, stick around and watch some of the many great videos I've posted over the last few years, and remember to check back again for new content I'll be posting every week. Have a great day.